As always, today's episode of the Band Directors Bistro is proudly sponsored by ironsmusic.com. For music educators on the go, this is the Band Directors Bistro. Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm John. And we'd like to welcome you to the Band Directors Bistro. Come on in. Today's episode of the Bistro is all about choosing a circuit. While we're getting your favorite table ready, John is going to tell you what we have on the menu for you today. Absolutely. Come on in and sit down. Let's get going. Today, for our appetizer, we have farm fresh fruit, locally sourced, of course. And we're going to talk a little bit about Mm. how did I meet this guy? How did he meet me? We're going to we're going to get into that a little bit. I know that's exactly I who knows. Uh, And then the main course. Fried flounder filet, our choicest mm. cut. Choice and we're going to get into a bit of a choice cut. The It's something new. It's the best part of the fish, the meatiest, the tenderest, our choice cut. We want to get into different choices you might have regarding what circuit you might want to be competing in with your marching band. And then finally, our dessert. And I got to read this one so I don't mess it up. Our dessert is Fludge Alicious Fondue Flambe. It's an exclusive at the Bistro. A fondue flambe. Yeah, it's very That's rare. Right. It's exclusive with us. Can't find it anywhere else. And we're going to get into how did Mark and I actually get started in band, get started in music for that matter. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Great menu today. Ah, uh, it looks like your table is ready. Right this way. But, uh, you know, as we get to the table here, you know, definitely, it's It's time to relax. We're we're, we're off the clock right this moment in terms of... uh, There you go. Much better. Music education in terms of... You look more more relaxed now. Being in front of the kids. So, and and because we are... Because we... Are not in front of the kids. Should we should we have another tasty beverage tonight, John? As always. Oh, what what are you going to be drinking tonight, my friend? Tonight, I am going with an old standby, one of my all-time favorites, a little Jack Daniels. Ooh, a little Jack. A little je- was it, is it Gentleman Jack or just the good old standby? Just, just good old standby Jack. Okay, Jack Daniels. Or as we call it over here, Jackie Danny. Jackie Danny. Well, Jackie here's Danny, to you that's what we call it over here. And your Jackie Danny. I've got a uh, I've got a nice little amber ale going today. So That's wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. Cheers to you, my friend. Ah. Mm. Delish. Always yes. goes down nice. This is kind of a sweeter. It's kind of nice. I like that. Hmm. Well, John, uh, if you didn't know, we have a Facebook page. And I, the reason I say that is because I know you're not on Facebook every day. But we do have a Facebook page, The Band Director's Bistro. Check it out. And we've actually gotten our very first question from a listener. We did. We, we did, did, really. We did. Wow. The people want to know, he asks, how did John and Mark meet? So ah. here we are for our appetizer, ladies and gentlemen, answering your questions. So how did we meet, John? I remember, I think it was uh, 1997. Correct. 1997. So, gosh. That is correct, sir. Ooh, you many, are correct, sir. How many years has that been? 23 years now. Tw- 23 years now. 23 years, John. 
23 years. 23 years and still going. Amazing. And when I met you, I was in high school. And you. That's correct. Had I been... was still bald. You were still bald, but still beautiful, I was still buddy. Bald. Still beautiful. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. And you were hired fortuitously by my band director, Mr. Gary L. Wampler. And yes, everybody. Correct, you are. I do know what the L stands for, and I want to see if I can keep this, uh, you know, keep this going to see if people are, have any interest to know what the L stands for. Gary L. Wampler hires you to be the assistant band director for the fall 1997, the famous Fountain Valley High School Waterworld show. And you did the arrangements that year, and we all but won the entire thing if it weren't for a little thing called El Nino. But. Oh, yeah. Do you remember anything about, uh, like, specifics and meeting me? Because I believe I was, no, I know I was drum I major. I was drum major, so. You had just been appointed or chosen as the drum major for your senior year, the upcoming senior year. I met you right as you were chosen. Now, I wasn't part of that process, but when I met you, Mr. Wampler, Gary, did tell me, it's like, this is going to be our drum major next year. So I do remember that very specifically. And I, yeah. I do remember you as a very, what's the word I want to use? Spirited personality right from the beginning. You had, you were just full of ideas and full of energy and just was raring to go. And you couldn't wait for the fall to start. I just, I, I remember just your energy was so, you know, out there in front. That was like one of my first impressions about you. But yeah, no, our friendship but, uh, really blossomed uh, immediately from immediately. high school. I yeah. mean, we it wasn't like we became friends after high school. We became friends while I was in high school, and that was that was awesome. Our our friendship really, really blossomed after high school, and that's when. Well, what was interesting with you is that even while you were still a senior in high school, you had already assumed such a role as a almost like another teacher in, in many ways. And so I start, I just really started looking at you less as a student and more as a fellow staff member. We were already taking on that role in teaching the students things. All of the choreography in, in, in uh, swimming was all you. Okay, you just you went up and taught it to everybody and it was in the show. I mean, none of the staff members, Gary, none of us even thought to, to change that. It was great the way it was. And so you were already doing things that were way above the normal responsibilities or duties of a student. And I have learned that uh, when you were in high school, you were doing the same thing as well. So we kind of connect on that through these years as well. And I think, I think we talked about that a little bit also, just mm-hmm. kind of saying you remind me of me. You know, because I was also taking on those responsibilities as well while I was still in high school. Right. So that's, I mean, that in a nutshell is how we met and it's never stopped since. No, man. We started this podcast um, to, because I think we've mentioned it in one of the first podcasts, but we, ladies and gentlemen listening to us, John and I have been having these exact same conversations for the last... 23 years and on a on a, on a on a on a pretty regular basis i would say um especially since john has moved to china uh i've probably been in contact with him more since he moved than when he was actually here he was so busy probably um, and so yeah it's um uh, it's unique ah but johnny look what's here Fried you know what? Filet. I'm, I'm... Oh, yes. Go for it. Yes. I'll... Go for it. Oh, my gosh. And it's the choice cut. Don't forget that. This... Not just any part of the fish. The choice cut. Ooh, it smells amazing. It smells amazing. The, uh, I'm not sure what kind of oil we're using in the kitchen, John, but it... It's, it's, this thing is fried perfectly. 
Well, you gotta be careful what kind of oils you use in the process. We've tried a number, and I'm not even sure which one it is now, but our chefs have, have, have tested many of them at different temperatures and found just the right oil at the right temperature to just perfectly fry it. Not too long, not too short. Like I said, that choice cut, nothing like it. You know, much like choosing the right oil for the right piece of fried fish, choosing a circuit for your band like can that. can be just as complex. That's right. And that was a great segue. You like that? One of the best we've had yet. Yeah, we're, I like that. We're getting better and better. Absolutely, John. The uh, Choosing a circuit can be, uh, for a lot of band directors, a no-brainer, right? A tum- a bit of a well, it can also be a tumultuous process. It can be a tumultuous as as process as what, well. What is best for your group? Right. You want to. You, you're gonna have. John and I were talking just before we came on the air, and there are a variety of factors that that you need to co- to consider. Um, and I'll tell you one of the things to consider. We know there's a lot of band directors out there that maybe only have one or two choices for a circuit, and. Unfortunately, band, those band directors, you know, you're going to do what you have to do in those situations. I think if there's only a couple of or one circuit in your area, there's always Bands of America, and that might require some travel. So that might that might be out of bounds for some groups. But um, in, in terms of the groups that do have those options, John, what are some of the considerations that they should take into account before they choose which circuit? to involve their program in? Good question. I think I'm going to start with the basics, and then there's also branches that go off of each of the basics, all right? But mm-hmm. from a basic level, there are, are, are essentially two concepts that you can look at when it comes to how uh, a circuit operates, all right? One style of circuit is uh, more of the drum core uh, I don't want to say copy, but it follows similarities to drum corps in the sense that you will have judges both upstairs in the press box as well as down on the field, whether they're actually on the field or on the perimeters looking in. But my point and is the, that uh, type of circuit. Bands of America is an example of one that correct, has judges correct. on the field. Well, but they're even talking about bringing the judges off the field in DCI. So on field judges right. could Still, be a thing of the past. Uh, very soon. Well, on the field in the sense that on the field, but they would still be uh, on the ground level, just off the actual sideline. They would not be encroaching onto the performance area. Exactly. Which which it, does which change things, things a little bit, right? Yeah. It does. It does. But it still allows for that judge or judges to assess and evaluate the individual. And that's where we're, I'm leading at is that the, there's a number of circuits out there that follow along the same guidelines where you'll have judges downstairs assessing the individual as well as judges upstairs assessing the ensemble. The other style of circuit, and again, I'm being basic here, the other style of circuit primarily locates all of the judges in the press box. Mm-hmm. So they're looking at all judges are evaluating your performance from an ensemble standpoint. Yes. So those are the two... That's the first level you want to look at. Do you do you want to have your kids being evaluated individually, or would you rather pref- would you prefer to have all the judges upstairs and focus more on the ensemble? That's question number one. Now, in some regions, many regions, you'd have a choice of either. All right. Well, I'll use Southern California as one example. In Southern California, for example, you have your choice of four different circuits. All right. And so there are, you can go many different ways as far as what you think is going to fit your program the best. That's now, right. other considerations S- to look at, which Mark enlightened me to earlier, and I'd forgotten about it, Well, is that some circuits... Yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Some circuits are going to go ahead and they're going to judge uh, the entire band for the most part, whereas other circuits will will include a percussion and a color guard. So... Right. In other words, some circuits will look at the percussion as part of the musical ensemble and not as a separate entity, and some will look at the color guards as part of the uh, visual and general effect category, but again, not their own individual category. So depending on your program, if you want those kinds of 
uh, you want that feedback for those individual categories and you also want to get maybe potentially you want to get credit for those maybe you've got really great percussion programs really great color guards well that's going to be the time that you're going to want to choose the circuit that does indeed uh, favor and, and have those things um, and then the, then there's going to be what I just call the real factor right John this is going to be the you know the, the classic scenario where on Friday you go to a band show and your band scores an 80 right and then on Saturday you go to a bands of America show and your band scores a 64 and while those scores are both both of those scores are relevant are actually correct in those circuits it might cause some confusion amongst your membership amongst your parents amongst mm -hmm. your staff if they're not mm -hmm. informed so um john do you want to kind of talk through what we're talking about why does that happen we have talked about this in a previous episode ladies and gentlemen so if you really want to dive in deep i think we did a whole minutia monday on judges sheets and judging so go ahead and check that episode out i think that was in season that was two in season two i think traditionally any circuit that employs judges that are going to be downstairs i.e on the field or on the perimeters looking onto the field traditionally those scores will generally be lower than a circuit that has judges upstairs and only upstairs when you do include that individual element where you're looking at an individual are they stepping off right are they employing a proper tone quality are they articulating properly whatever it might be at that point usually those numbers tend to bring the overall score down a little bit and that's not a bad thing it's just like mark said it's the real factor you have to accept that reality and that kind of brings up another point that is very very relevant which is the quality of judge there are going to be some circuits here uh, and John and I are very familiar with the Southern California area so there's a mm -hmm. very famous circuit the Southern California Band Directors Association the SCSBOA uh, where they employ uh, music educators fellow band directors so you have band directors judging band directors um, and they are, are they are trained and they are there's a vetting process and and uh, for the most part, it works out very well. So there are exceptions to that, but for the most part, the peer review system that SCSBOA uh, uses, for the most part, it does work. Occasionally, you're going to have a particular band director slash judge that might be a little bit more generous with his numbers a lot, numbers management, and some band directors who also might have extensive drum corps experience, and as they approach the, the adjudication level, they might be a little more stringent with their numbers management. And again, there's nothing wrong with either or. You have to employ the real factor, like Mark was saying. And then Bands of America is going to employ judges that are WGI judges and DCI judges, and their their training is a little bit more extensive. extensive and, uh, I, and I think that they spend a little bit more time with the judges on the numbers management side of things and as well as they do. drawing from those two other organizations those other organizations also heavily vet train and spend a lot of time on numbers management as well so uh and then there's other organizations that kind of hire a mix of the two so they'll hire some maybe they'll hire a band director they'll hire a, a, a visual professional maybe um i know Ryan H. Turner is not a band director, but he is an adjudicator, and he's a very good adjudicator. You hear me, Ryan? Well, You're a great also, judge. But uh, that being said, even he's, he can't now, judge. Right. right. He was a, right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you can only judge the visual side of things and not the music side of things. There, there are different. Um, different. There's going to be different rules for different associations. So correct. And and so yeah, definitely want to look at those look look at who is judging your program and and what kind of feedback you're going to be getting another consideration is you know programs like bands of america sometimes will offer a clinic i always found that to be very helpful for for our program and for our development and and getting better as educators so if there's a circuit mm -hmm. that can offer some kind of a clinic i i would say try it you know it could could not do anything but help. I think from a minor standpoint, there are a couple other considerations. Um, again, I'm going to relate to Southern California since we're so familiar with that. 
if you wish to participate in that particular circuit's championships, and most circuits will offer a final championship round, either over one show or one weekend, that kind of thing, then uh, scheduling becomes somewhat of a factor. For SCSBOA, one example, since that is pretty much limited to Southern California slash San Diego, the distance required to travel to the championship site isn't all that far. When you look at a circuit like the Western Bands Association, what we call WBA, WBA uh, involves bands from all over the state, so they will move the championship site around. Sometimes it's in Southern California, sometimes it could be in Northern California, sometimes it could be in Central California, which might be more of a challenge for you to go to that championship show. So again, scheduling, geographical location in some in some in some uh, in some areas you need to go ahead and consider those things as well and also talking about championship shows john how do you qualify for those championship shows you're going to want to read the rule books on each one of these associations because they're all going to be slightly different in terms of timing rules um you know the the weighting of of, of the judging could be slightly different uh in the different categories as well so another thing is that you know, if you want to go to a championship, I, I know that you probably think I'm a Bands of America fanboy right now. I, I am a pretty big fan of Bands of America, but every single band that wants to can go to Indianapolis and perform in Bands of America championships. So if Correct. you want to, if you want a championship guaranteed, you got you might have to travel there, but you can. Most other circuits go on require on a, a minimum yep. number of circuit uh, of circuit shows to qualify to go to the championships right and then in circuits like SESBOA, SESBOA you have so many bands that want to go to the championships that say you have to go ahead and qualify with high enough scores you go to three yes. shows minimum they average those three shows and if your number qualifies you are then in the championship round all right so that's another consideration as far as some circuits um, will have many many bands making it more of a challenge to get to those championships. Some circuits, anybody's allowed to go to prelims, then you got to you got to make it through that round, right. but you're allowed to go there without any restrictions. So, so again, a, each circuit will have different requirements. A, a variety, right? And uh, like I said, one year I did, you know, I think there were five different circuits, and and we did all all five just to try them all. Um, kind of, kind of and, a smorgasbord, you know, a little buffet. A, absolutely. We, we had our, our little buffet that year, and we... And I think we ended up qualifying for two different championships that year. That was kind of nice. But we, you know, went to the one, and and yeah, it was it was a neat experience. It, I wouldn't do it again, um, but I wanted to try it. I convinced uh, Gary L. Wampler to give it a shot, and he he said, "Let's do it." So yeah, that was a uh, right a couple years before he retired. So anyway, John, one uh, last thing to consider. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to bring up one last thing. Mark mentioned earlier about reading through the various rule books, and I, I heartily endorse that and agree with it, from the sense that if nothing else, you should know the minimum and maximum timing requirements, because you'll have to design your show in such a way to meet those requirements. Some band directors, I've done, I, with all the arranging I did 25 years ago in Southern California, some band directors wouldn't consider, wouldn't even begin to think about those things, and their show would end up being a minute shorter than the minimum requirement. Then we have to come up with last minute fixes to lengthen the show to meet the minimum timing requirement. Yeah, you don't want to so have to your... adjust your show for the circuits you're in. You want to try to <laughs> definitely aim for that one size fits all model. But yeah, correct. Usually yeah. to this day, in these days, usually. The minimum timing is right about seven minutes. So as long as you're designing a show between the seven to eight minute range, you're pretty much safe. But just something right. to keep in mind. Right. Oh, bah! Oh, bah. Wow. Oh. What hair you have? Well, I, like many of you, need a haircut. Oh, got a little, got a little beer stash going on there. Oh, save that for later.
Mm. All right, John. What are we talking Damn. about here in desserts? We've got the ooh. dessert. Fudgelicious. Fudgelicious. Fondue. Fondue flambe. That's right. That's right. We said it. And this is uh, exclusive to the bistro. You know, I said I, I was I was looking at this this fondue, right, John? And I'm looking at the fire underneath the pot. It's pretty cool. That's cool. And I'm thinking to myself, you would be cooler. More fire. More fire, John. So, so add a little alcohol to that cheese. I talked to the I talked to the tenders. They made it happen. And I was calling it flambeau. You got some amazing I mean, chefs I, here. I didn't even know how to, I didn't I didn't know what it was called. I thought it was a flambeau. I'm a big Bo Jackson fan, so yep. maybe I just flambeau Jackson. Yeah, I think I think you were fixated on that. Here's Not flambe. Flambe bridge. Got it. Got ah, it. Flambe. Ah. Well, this is a. This is just going to be a quick little chat about, you know, we've all got our origin stories, right? And it got, got me kind of thinking when we were talking about how we met, and we've talked about our band directors, but we've never really talked about those very, very first formal influences that we had into music. So I kind of know your story, John, but not all the way, and I think you kind of know my story, probably not all the way, so why don't we give our audience... Uh, a little treat here. How did you even start in music, my friend? First of all, for me, I have some of my earliest memories are musically based because I remember as a two-year-old, three-year-old child listening to my dad play music constantly around the house. Hmm. And he he had a record collection of 2,000 LPs. Wow. And some of his favorite choices were jazz. So before I ever heard about the Beatles or rock and roll or the Stones or any of that, I was listening to Stan Getz, Boots Randolph, Illinois Jacquet, people like that, and I thought that was normal. And so I heard jazz before I ever heard anything else. And about the time I was seven years old, my parents realized that I had a, a knack for music. I was already I was already rhythmically, you know, matching up with whatever I heard on a record, even singing along to it sometimes. So they thought, it's time for some music lessons. So they took me down to the local music store. Now, at that age, I was very undersized compared to most other seven-year-olds. My hands wouldn't fit the piano, and that's what the it, most parents will take their kids in and go, piano lessons. And I thought, great except I couldn't fit the piano. Mm. So the teacher, the piano teacher suggested to my parents, why don't we start him on, and please don't shoot me on this, the accordion. And and I thought, I, I, I'm, I'm seven years old, what do I know? So I thought, okay. The squeeze box. The, the squeeze box. And the thing is, I never moved back to the piano. I took 10 years of private accordion lessons almost at the level of almost a college music major for that wow um more to a direct sense of how did i get involved with the band world as most kids or those kids who want to when they're nine or ten years old they have the opportunity to get into at least in my era maybe not so much today but you had elementary school band and so of course i wanted to be part of that I didn't play a band instrument yet, so my parents went down to that local music store who they knew very, they all knew the, the employees there, and we rented a trumpet, a con student trumpet. And I started in band my fifth grade year. Con makes a great back. student horn, don't they? They sure do. They yeah, sure they do. do. And the thing is, trumpet never quite fit me. It wasn't, mm. it didn't fit my embouchure. It wasn't a comfortable fit. A year later, I moved to baritone and then on and on and on with different instruments over the years. But and you ended up playing baritone. I've always come back to baritone. I ended up playing baritone in the Santa Clara Vanguard. So that was a big part of your life. That's there. right. And, and uh, I still, I still are, mess around with it. Now, now I'm a are, bassist. I'm a you're bassist. mostly a, a bass player. And not right. the not the only person I know that has migrated to that instrument. Uh, wasn't their first instrument, but has become their uh, their first instrument. Uh, so I, th- I find that interesting. It happened by that happenstance for me. Bass so. is that instrument. Um, but anyway, how did I get into into music? My mom used to say growing up that she had had no idea why my brother Alan and I were so into music because she was not into music. My father was not into music. The, uh, I didn't grow up hearing Stan Getz uh, in the house. That's for sure. 
Um, I grew up watching uh, L.A. Kings hockey games and watching the uh, Detroit Tigers on TV. My dad liked and, oh, and watching a lot of golf. My dad loved his sports. And um, my mom listened to a lot of Tina Turner and Whitney Houston. So I, that, that was kind of my growing up with music. But we had a neighbor. And our neighbor Well, Sue, Tina Turner's great. Oh, so I mean, that's I, pretty classy right there. I am not complaining. Uh, right. But I had a neighbor, Sue Lieberman, whose uh, son and daughter were both in the high school marching band. And they were both... In the uh, in high school, so they were assigned to babysit my brother and I, and I'll never forget. You know, when I was very little, going and watching the Fountain Valley High School marching band rehearse, um, and I thought these were just you know huge huge people doing impossible things. Um, it didn't didn't dawn on me at the time that that was something I wanted to do. Um, I don't think it, I was in the realm of my thought of even being able to do but uh when we got to that age in elementary school fourth grade uh you got the opportunity to get in ba- be in band so when my brother was in fourth grade he chose the french horn and when i got to that same uh choice period if i often joke that if there was a tuba in the room i'd be a tubist because i was i just wanted the biggest instrument they had that wasn't a french horn and that was a baritone. <laughs> and watching me carry that baritone when I was a, a little kid, you know, to and fro from school to the house, was uh, I was about the same size as me when I started. But uh, yeah, never forget those uh, formidable, formidable, formidable and formidable band directors, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Earl, Marlo Earl, and of course Mr. Fred Fred Peters. Well, Marvin Bertelson. That was my high, my elementary school band director. Marvin what, Bertelson. One quick story to end it. I ha- do you remember back in the old days with chalkboards? They would have, they didn't have the uh, the staves on the chalkboards. They would have these really cool uh, chalk chalk things. It was like a piece of wood with metal coming out of it. You, you put five pieces of chalk in, and it, it would make the. Uh, uh-huh. Make the staff, and I'll never forget. Uh-huh. Mr. Mr. Earl got mad at us one day, and he took that 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 staff maker of chalk, and he made the made the uh, made the staff, but they just kept going, and he threw it across the room. <laughs> and that, I'll never forget that imagery; will never leave my mind. Um, because yeah, it was just so. I got one. Be- <laughs> I got one better. Very visual. I got one better. Eighth grade, I'm playing tuba. I have to sit on a couple of telephone books to reach your mouthpiece, but I'm still playing tuba. <laughs> and I'm talking in the middle of band class one day, and my band director, Mr. Dom D'Angelo, who was Italian, obviously, uh, got very mad, and he threw his baton at me. Ooh. All right? Now, obviously, that's not a good thing. <laughs> I know that. But the thing is, I'm so small, and the tuba is so big, the baton hits the bell of the tuba oh. and dents the tuba, oh. just making him even madder. <laughs> My goodness. That reminds oh, me know. of a that reminds me of a good drum corps story I have I need to tell one day that involves a uh, longtime soloist and my former section leader, Mr. Eric Hand. I'll have to tell that story someday. About him throwing we'll throwing something. Yeah. But anyway, John I think uh, I think we got to wrap things up here, man. We we got some busy band directors well, here full. at the Bistro. That, and... that choice cut just filled Oof. me up, and then adding on that flambe, ah, man. I'm done. It's I'm been... done. I'm I'm gonna wash it down, wash it down with one more little sip here. Cheers but I think to we you. Had ourselves a wonderful cheers meal to the, today. Cheers Absolutely. to having a great rest of your week, ladies and gentlemen. We wanna we wanna thank you so much for for stopping by the Bistro today. Once again, my name is Mark. I'm John. As always, this is the Band Director's Bistro. See you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Back to work. Bistro.